welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Boeing 7378 Max in the simulator and uh, in this regard, I'm making a series of videos of this plane so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight into different videos which will make it easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. Before this, I've uploaded videos in which I've shown you how to configure the FMC or the flight management computer of this plane. Uh, then in the second video, I've shown you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state. And the third video is about the autopilot. Now in this video, I will show you how to perform uh, ILS approach and landing and manage the descent. Today, I'm doing this short flight from uh, Dubai to Qatar. Currently, I'm cruising at uh, 32,000 feet and uh, soon I will be near the top of descent. So I have to do a few settings before I start the descent. Let's get the altitude. Uh, to which I will be descending. So uh, this is uh, Hamad International Airport for Qatar. Let's select it and let's select the approach, which is 34 right. So 2500 is the altitude at which I will be intercepting this glide slope. So let's uh, reduce the altitude. The descent will not start now as the plane is in the VNAV mode. So that's why as soon as the plane will cross this uh, point for the top of descent, the descent will automatically start. So this is now 2500. Let's go to the flight management computer. But before this, let me just adjust the sunlight. <laughs> I will just keep it over here. Okay. So for this, um, go to this option in it ref and uh, go to index and approach. Now you have to se select the flaps and uh, the speed uh, for the approach. Right now, uh, the cross weight is 165.3. And according to this weight, uh, these flap settings and the speeds are calculated. Now you have to actually get the new cross weight. So once the plane is at uh, Hamad International Airport, there will be 26,000 pounds of fuel in the plane at the destination. So I was carrying 30,000 pounds. That's why I will just uh, burn 4,000. <laughs> Too much fuel for this flight. OK, so let's go to index approach and uh, 161.2. And now you will see we will get new speeds. So let, let's let uh, select this full flaps and 44 knots for the approach. And uh, uh, let's uh, wait for the top of descent. Now the descent should start automatically. Let's wait for it. And that's it. Now this is the indicator for the vertical path, whether the plane is following the vertical path or not. If it's in the middle, it means everything is good. If this triangle is above, then it means you are uh, lower than the vertical path. And if this triangle is over here, then it means you are higher than the vertical path. If you're lower than the vertical path, then it's okay. But if you're higher than the vertical path, then you have to increase the descent rate in order to follow this vertical path. That's it. So now um, it's a long way to go. And uh, there are many constraints during uh, this uh, flight. And the plane will actually follow them. Now one more thing I just uh, want to let you know is this that you know, um, I'm using let me just get the controller settings. I'm using uh, the Thrustmaster TC Cotton, the Airbus edition. And I'm using uh, the default settings for it. So if you open uh, uh, these control settings, you will see TC Accordant, Airbus 1 and 2, 2004, transversal. So these settings are there. I have not changed anything, and the reverse thrust works for me. Although I haven't uh, adjusted the sensitivity for the throttle, so I will make a separate video for that. But for this video, I will just use the reverse thrust. Otherwise, uh, for the rest of the thrust settings, I'm using 
the controller on the side stick. Now the transition altitude for this airport is 13,000 feet. So at this altitude, I will also adjust the altimeter. And uh, below 10,000 feet, I will turn on the lights. The, uh, the seatbelt uh, seat signs are set to auto. So they will automatically turn on. And that's it. Now you can see that uh, there is a speed constraint and the speed is 230 knots and after this point and now the speed is not reducing so you can activate the speed brakes so that the plane follows this uh, speed restriction without impacting the descent rate now you can see the plane is slightly lower than the descent profile but uh, it's okay now you can see the speed brakes are active that's it now I can do this now the plane is uh, about to cross 13,000 feet so I will uh, now change the barometer pressure from the standard to the given one. So hold it with the left mouse button and then click it with the right one and press comma. So now you will get the barometer pressure. Altimeter is now correct. That's it. Now over here on this uh, panel, if you just move over here, you have to enter the ILS frequency and uh, the ILS frequency for runway 34 right is 110.1 .1. so this is the ILS you can change the mode if I press this button it goes to VR and then ILS so if you're carrying out VR navigation then you can set the VR frequency otherwise you will set it for the ILS you can clear it uh, can I? no ok let's enter 110.1 and uh, press this button to make it the active and now you also have viewer over here because it's swapped so you can change the mode and 110.1 as as a contingency i'm doing this <laughs> so let's uh, keep eyeless on both of the modes now the plane is below 10,000 feet i can turn on the lights you don't need to turn off lights taxi lights landing lights logo wing and wheel well. All the lights are on now. And uh, that's it. Everything is good. No errors. So now it's uh, time to set the minimums. And the minimums uh, are given over here. Category 3. It's the most precise ILS approach and landing. And then you have category 2, and category 1 and localizer DME. Which is the least precise ILS approach and landing. So as ILS is carried out by the instruments, so that, that's why. It has to be accurate. This plane uh, can perform a category 3 landing. So you can uh, set uh, this uh, uh, decision height to be 75 feet above the ground. The runway elevation is 13. Another thing that you have to do, uh, is you have to set the landing altitude. So the landing altitude is, I will keep it at 50 because you can either keep it 0 or 50. And that's it. So, uh, it's uh, 13 feet. So, you can keep 75, but as the, it's mentioned over here as company, so the company provides you. For category 2, it's based on the radio. So, in this uh, type of uh, uh, altitude calculation, radio signals are sent to the ground to get the distance. And uh, the category 1 and localizer DME, which is distance marine equipment, DME stands for uh, is based on the barometric pressure. So uh, you measure the altitude based on the barometric pressure. So for category 2, uh, I will uh, set it to radio. Just uh, move this knob, move it to radio. And then you can move this smaller knob to adjust the altitude. It will be 150. Actually, you, you, know, you have to be very careful while moving this knob. 
if you move too much then <laughs> it changes let me just adjust it it's been tricky and that's it so you can also keep 230 if uh, you are using barrel and uh, you can now see that as i've entered the iles frequency over here this uh, diamond has started to appear which uh, shows you the vertical deviation from the glide slope now we have to further reduce the speed so let me just uh, get the speed brakes and now you can see the speed is at 220 knots this is the speed uh, at which you can just fly without any flaps but uh, now as i am below 100 uh, 250 knots i can extend the flaps and uh, i will keep it at 2 degrees and then i can just like deactivate the speed brakes and that's it so now you can see this diamond is going up as we are at a good altitude and the plane is following the vertical path now there is another thing i just want to tell you as uh, now i have extended the flaps so they are providing drag and the speed is getting reduced i don't have to use the speed brakes anymore but now the speed is getting reduced um if i retract the flaps you will see the speed will increase and uh, that's it if i further retract the flaps it will go up to 220 so that's how you control the speed once the plane is below maybe 5000 feet now you can hear the stall warning <laughs> so that's why you should get the flaps so this was just for the purpose of demonstration <laughs> now you have to arm the speed brakes uh, for the landing so just uh, move this lever to this point armed and now you will see this green light it means speed brake armed and make make sure that the speed brakes are not active otherwise you will have an issue you need to arm them for the landing because uh, once you will activate the reverse thrust the speed brakes will also come into action to slow down the plane on the runway and uh, these are the auto brakes i cannot change it yeah actually i'm using the thrust master tc quadrant so that's why i had to set it over there so now i have uh, set it to max what's happening <laughs> can i move it this is like very strange i think it's kind of a bug let me just try to do it again very strange i've been actually flying this plane a lot and never faced this issue uh, this is kind of a murphy's law every time when i when you are making a video this thing happens and what if i oh i cannot do that if i set them to maximum i'm changing the view and this thing is happening anyhow you can ignore it uh i will apply the brakes myself now i can just extend the flaps let's adjust the heading the heading of the runway is 336 if i am not wrong you need it for the missed approach procedure and in case you want to fly this heading mode that's it i can further extend the flaps so the runway is now 10.4 nautical miles away i can further extend the flaps and uh, with this i can activate this approach mode for the autopilot now in this mode uh, the autopilot will not only fly this uh, uh, straight flight path it will follow this uh, lateral flight navigation but also follow the glide slope which is this one 3 degree descent towards the runway as soon as this diamond is in the middle 
So this is uh, for the lateral navigation and this is for the vertical path. And now you can see the plane has started to descend towards the runway. So the minimums are set, lights are on. Speed brake is armed for the landing. Let's try the auto brakes once more, one more time. Or maybe I just keep it like this and I don't uh, change the view because you know, I can activate the speed brakes, but if I change the view, <laughs> this is very funny. As soon as I right click, this thing happens. So I will not do this. No right clicks. Now you can see VNAV and LNAV are not active. And now the approach is active because approach is carrying out both of the navigations, the LNAV and the VNAV. And now uh, I can lower the gears and extend the flaps. And now, as the speed is not, not controlled by the autopilot, so I have to reduce it, 144 knots. This is speed for the approach. Now you will see that the speed is also reducing. Now landing gears down, full flaps. And if you look at this uh, small circle, it should be in the middle. So you have to keep this in the middle during the landing. I can close the EFB. No more right clicks. <laughs> and uh, now I can deactivate the autopilot and try to land the plane myself by keeping this in the middle. Actually, I have only performed uh, three or four landings with this plane in the new simulator, so my skills might not be so good <laughs> for this landing. Landings are always a challenge. So I'm just trying to aim for this smaller circle. Approaching minimums. That's it. Minimums. One hundred. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Twenty. I think this is not correct because you know I have missed the touch point. Anyhow, I can reduce the thrust and activate the reverse thrust. And now let's see. Speed brakes are active with the reverse thrust. And below 80 knots, I can deactivate the reverse thrust and apply brakes to slow down the auto brakes. I can deactivate them. That's it. So that's how you land this plane and uh, carry out an ILS approach. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for watching it. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.